Good morning, Floss Tube. I'm Misty Purcell. Welcome to my channel. Today is Friday, the 14th of September, and hard to believe that September has gone by so quickly. We're already a quarter of the way through the fall semester at the university. Classes are busy. Um, thanks so much for visiting with me today, and if you're new here, welcome. If this is your first time, if you've been here before, welcome back, and thanks for joining me. Been looking forward to hanging out with you today and talking about kind of what I've been up to. Um, I've been limping along on my stitching, <laughs> so I'll uh, talk about my stitching, uh, a new start that I had, and I'll share some things from the archives, and then I'll talk a little bit about my shop update at the end. But I wanted to start with a huge thank you. Um, I received so many kind comments on my last video and so many people reached out to me with enthusiasm and encouragement um, as I started releasing a design and um, hand dyeing fabric that I put in my Etsy shop. So thank you so much um, to everyone who took the time to watch or who took the time to get in touch with me. Thank you for visiting my Etsy shop. I really just was like overwhelmed by all of the kind and generous um, comments that people left to me. So thank you so much. I really, I can't even express to you how much I appreciate all of you. You're the best. Um, so what have I been up to? Well, I have been behind on floss tube, so I'm trying to catch up. And I feel like I will maybe be behind forever. <laughs> It's been real busy. I've been able to watch maybe like a video a day. Sometimes I can fit in a little bit more, but I have a, a lot of grading. I'm kind of at that point in the semester where like every, I'm, I have three different classes and every class has an exam. It seems like one class has it one week and then the next, the next week. So I'm always grading exams and essays every week now. So there's no non-grading weekends, I think this semester, unfortunately. So I've been really busy with classes, but they're going really well. Um, my students are doing well and they're very engaged and we're having fun with Spanish. So that's always good. Uh, but I did watch a little bit of Floss Tube, and someone I watched who is not new, but was newer to me, um, was Annie from Annie B's Folk Art. I've been following her on Instagram and I didn't realize that she had a Floss Tube channel and I checked out her videos and she's really wonderful. Um, a lot of you I'm sure are uh, already followers of Annie, um, but she was sharing in her most recent video her new design releases and they're lovely. Um, I really like her use of color and I liked her designs are really pretty. Um, I liked seeing the other things that she was working on and she's just really pleasant to listen to. She does some quilting. I really liked her quilts. Um, she was doing some hand applique. So if on the off chance you haven't checked her out, please do. I will link her channel below. Um, what else? Well, let's just get right into it, shall we? So, as I've indicated, I would be starting the Tis the Season, um, sal, and I won't show you the pattern because I think everyone has shown the pattern across the internet like one million times, so I think you probably remember, and I've already showed it like a million times, but here's where I'm at. You can kind of, it's like, like reasonably accurate, it's a little bit greener than what you can tell from way back there. But here's my cardinal, and it's stitching up, I think, remarkably fast. I mean, I've hardly put in any time on it because I haven't had a lot of time um, to put in on it. But this is um, some 40 count linen that I dyed myself, and I'm using um, Belle Soie. I don't remember the color. <laughs> Maybe tulip? I'm not using the called for color because that was a little bit pink. So with the modeling, on the floss. Uh, I'm not going back and forth. I'm kind of going like up and down and around. I'm kind of swooping around so that I can get kind of more of a, I guess, splotchy and less lined look just cause I kind of like, I like both, um, but I kind of wanted it to look kind of uh, modeled. So I've got Belle Soie here as well. And this is Belle Soie and the blackish gray. The beak is the Victorian motto. And um, my God, this is beautiful. I am enjoying every stitch and I wish that I would have more time to work on it. Um, I may not even finish it this year, just kind of the way things are going, but I enjoy it when I work on it. And I think it's such a beautiful design and it was worth the however many years I waited 
and didn't buy the pattern when I should have. However many years it's been, a decade possibly at least, um, it's still worth the wait. Absolutely love it. So this is coming along slowly, but nicely. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy with it. I really love the floss and, and I will say something about the bell swass. So, you know, I know that um, silks are a bit of a luxury to stitch with. Um, but the bell swat is, I think, five meters, but it's 12 strands. So you are still getting twice as much floss as you would with some of the other um, flosses that you buy. So um, just to be aware of that. And I could totally see myself, especially this red, using this on like a lot of Christmas designs. So I really feel like I will get my money's worth out of that. Um, okay, so that was my new start. I do have a couple of other new starts I can't share. I've got... Um, a Christmas gift underway and I've got um, my next design which I keep starting and then stopping because I don't like the fabrics so I'm going back to the dye pot to do some more dyeing and see if I can get um, a couple different colors that I'm going to test out maybe even three um, so I'll be starting over on that again hopefully it won't take me too long to figure that out um okay so back to the rotation when witches go riding, I've shown this several times, and again, kind of slow progress, but progress nonetheless. It's looking good. I love stitching it. It makes me very happy. Um, I showed this in my last video, and I think since then I've done this part down here, so not a whole lot. Um, but it just makes me happy whenever I stitch on it. And the words are pretty fast to stitch. And I love the colors. I love the vintage Halloween look. I love Halloween. So I'm just really enjoying this. And I just wish and hope that I can get it done before like early October so that I can actually enjoy it this year. Awesome needle minder. Mad for minders on Etsy. This is my own hand dyed linen. This is Harvest Moon in 32 count works really well for this. I like the kind of cream and slight brown. I think it goes well with um, the colors and the design. So this is just such a fun stitch and um, I'm really glad I'm working on it. And lastly, American flag quilt sampler. I'm still plugging along, but instead of like, what was I doing? Like, I think I think I was doing like one block a week or so that was like my speed and now it's like not even one a month it's like barely that so here's where we're at and so I'm working on New York here which I have to say that I really love all these blocks and their complexity but this one somehow is just so satisfying the simplicity I love the star inside the square there so um I need to do one more uh section of stripes down in here and then put in New York across the top and that one will be done. And I just, I'm really enjoying this one, especially, I don't know, something about the simplicity of it. It's just really, really pretty. So I'll give you a close up. So I'm loving it. I'm really happy. Um, I'll just keep plugging along. <laughs> So that's kind of it for like what I've been stitching. Let's see what else I've got here. I thought it was time to bust out some fall and Halloween. So this weekend, hopefully it'll only take me the weekend. This weekend I'm gonna put out my decorations. I've got so much fall stuff, it's awesome. So you, you can, if you're a fall fan or a Halloween fan, look forward to many more from the archives. So this is our from the archives segment. Let's look at quilts today. So, first is a really basic one. This is one, um, when I took a quilting 101 class, we learned to make this kind of really simple table runner. And so I decided to do a fall one after I took the class. And this is like an Asian print here. Um, and there's a little candle, candle stain right there. Here, let's look at the nice side. Here, that's better. <laughs> but anyway, this goes on my table, my kitchen table. And it's just kind of fun and cheerful. So I enjoy it for fall and it's just really simple. Um, very minimal quilting just in the ditch. But you know, it makes me happy every year when I got it out. So um, that's one very basic thing that I did, one of my early fall projects. 
And I forgot to get the pattern out for this, so I'll look in my stash and see if I can find it for you. Um, and then I can make a note, if I, if I can find it, I'm sure I can figure it out. I'll make a note of it in um, the description box below. So this is a quilt that I made many years ago. <laughs> Here we go. Um, and so I made mine a little bit brighter. You can see that I did some stippling that kind of echoes the um, pattern here in the background. Um, I brightened this up a bit from what it was originally and the cat had a face and I just kind of felt like leaving it. It's an Amish cat. <laughs> um, no, I just uh, felt like kind of leaving it blank. I just kind of liked it plain. And then I embroidered at the bottom the trick-or-treat. So this is just kind of a cheerful little wall hanging that hangs um, in my entryway. And it just makes me happy every year when I get it out. So I really enjoy this. Um, the hat is made out of homespun. So I'm excited to have this on the wall. And let's see what the next quilt is. Oh, that's, um, I should say that's raw edge applique. That's the kind of applique that 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 I used for that project. Okay, this one is like quilt number, when I started taking quilting classes, this is quilt number like three or four that I did. So it's pretty early on in my quilting career. And I think considering that it turned out pretty well. This is from um, Karen K. Stone, and I think it's called Yard Bird Circling the Cat. And this is, oh, hard to get any picture. I'll see if I can insert a photo for you too. So this was a challenge for me as an early quilter, picking so many colors of fabric, because there are a lot here. And this is paper piecing, this is foundation paper piecing. So, you know, the way that you get those really nice points is that you're sewing your fabric down onto the foundation paper, um, and then you ultimately peel the paper off. So I like Karen K. Stone's designs. I have a book of hers with um, some really pretty other designs and I would love to make more of her patterns. And this quilt, um, kind of a funny story about it. I made this quilt while I was a graduate student and um, when I finished, even though, you know, it has flaws, of course, right? But when I finished making it, I felt such a sense of accomplishment that I never felt as a graduate student with any of the work that I ever turned in. And it kind of made me realize, I think starting with this quilt, that maybe <laughs> I should not get a PhD um, because I felt like the work that I was doing personally, not that I feel this way about what other people do in graduate school, but me personally, I wasn't sure that the work I was doing mattered that much. And when I turned in my work, I didn't always feel like it was good, even though I was trying really hard. I just wasn't sure that, I don't know, it's hard to explain where I was at at that point in my life. Um, that was a long time ago now, but it just wasn't, I just didn't feel the same sense of like, I, ah, I feel good about this that I did when I made a quilt. Like the feeling was like night and day. Here's a paper I'm turning in. I'm not sure if it's good, but this quilt I feel really good about. So as I was crafting a lot in graduate school, it just kind of made me realize that probably I shouldn't get a PhD. Um, you know, I should just keep doing what I'm doing and teaching, but not necessarily researching because my research papers, even though I liked research and that was kind of why, one of the reasons I came to graduate school, I just, was a lot happier making quilts than I was writing research papers. So funny little backstory about me. Um, and lastly, and this is probably my favorite of all of the quilts that I'm sharing with you today. And I'm probably gonna have to insert a photo of this as well because you probably won't be able to see the whole thing at once. But nonetheless, we will try. So I took a class several years ago on how to do these baskets with diamonds. And it was just a technique class. So it's not like you had a project necessarily in mind, although she gave 
some layouts, but it's just a technique class. And this person, these are Y seams um, where they're joined here. They're Y seams there. So I hadn't done Y seams before. So it was a good like way to learn one, how to cut out diamonds and two, how to do Y seams. Um, check out the awesome spider web quilting. Ha, ah, I love it. So yes, I'll have to insert a photo because you just can't see the whole thing very well. Um, so anyway, I took this class to learn the technique and then I wanted to um, do something with it. And I took several classes from the teacher. Um, she used to live in Lancaster and then she moved back here. Her name is Barbara Lennox. Um, she's a really good teacher, just has really good techniques. They're very involved, but you get a good result. So um, after the class, I really wanted a quilt and I'd been wanting a Halloween quilt. Um, just, I, I didn't have one that was like larger wall hanging size. And, um, and she'd also taught us to do these, I think they're Lemoyne stars if I remember correctly. So um, I decided to make a quilt out of the blocks and just kind of specifically try to make a Halloween quilt. So I ended up making four of these basket blocks, which you can only see part of. And then four of the little Lemoyne stars that are so cute and tiny. Um, made the quilt top and then I wanted to think about like how am I going to quilt this and I really wanted to do spider webs in the quilting. So what I had read about doing um, was using press and seal, drawing your pattern on glad press and seal, putting that on your quilt and sewing through the press and seal and then like ripping it off kind of like foundation paper piecing in a way. So that's what I did. And it worked really well for me, except that some of those little plastic pieces did not come out easily, even with tweezers. So, you know, would I use that method again? Maybe it wasn't my favorite, but it worked well so that I didn't have to mark up the quilt with any like chalk or um, water soluble marker or anything like that. It was just a pain to get all those little plastic pieces out, but I love the quilt. It was a lot of fun. The class was good. So, um, I just love this and every year when I hang it up, it makes me so happy. And um, this fabric right here, the screen fabric, if I remember correctly, this was from a line, a Thimbleberries line called like Mr. Halloween's Party. And that was just like one of the best, if you were a quilter back then, like, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, it was just one of the best Halloween lines ever. Like it's still imprinted in my mind, the name of the line, I loved it that much. And I wish I'd gotten more of the fabrics. And ironically, I just saw on Etsy the other day, someone posted some, you know, it's like a decade old. And I was like, should I get it? I'm not really making a lot of quilts right now. And so I hesitated and she who hesitates is lost. So it sold out, of course. But I'm still like always on the lookout for that fabric because that line was just so cute and kind of fun vintage, kind of had a prairie schooler-ish Halloween feel to it. So, Mr. Halloween's party. Awesome. Can't get any more, but if you find it somewhere, grab it. Okay, so those are my From the Archives. I have so much awesome Halloween stuff. Like, we've got plenty of material for the next many videos. So, uh, all kinds of crafts, like really random things. Knitting, crochet, cross stitch, painted things that are easy to make. Yep, I got plenty for you. Oh, wool, um, felted wool stuff. I'm excited. Like, I kind of want to show it all in one video, but then my room would be a mess. Okay. So those are all of my things, my plans. Um, I'm just going to keep stitching. <laughs> That's my only plan. Keep working, keep stitching. Ideally, I'll finish my um, uh, When Witches Go writing sometime before October or right around October 1st. And I'm kind of playing with a couple of ideas about how I might finish it. Um, like how I'll hang it up. I know where I want to put it and I kind of know generally what I want to do with it, but I'm still kind of visualizing the final result. So I'll be working on that. I'm working on, um, another design. Like I said, I've got to get the fabric dies so that I can stitch it up and I got to quit changing my mind. Uh, that would help. Um, I don't think I can join any more stitch alongs right now because, um, I'm slow and I'm really busy. So I, I really wanted to join the Hawk Run Hollow one, but I think I've just got to sit it out right now and, and kind of just keep moving my current projects along. 
Um, and I'm enjoying them. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. And I don't want to feel too overwhelmed with like too many things going at once. So, um, okay. So I will talk a little bit about my Etsy shop now. So, um, many of you inquired about the fabric and it, I was just amazed it sold out so fast last time within a few hours. Um, I really didn't expect that at all. So I dyed more fabric this time. Uh, it shouldn't sell out so quickly. So let me talk about what's, what's coming in the shop, what's now in the shop. So what's now in the shop, whoops, um, the Spooky October design that I shared, that I designed, is now available as a digital download. And it's also available as a paper pattern. So you can purchase either one. They're both in my Etsy shop and this is in stock now. And then for fabric, I, um, I tried to pay attention to a number of people got in touch with me asking about specific colors, if I would have them again, or indicating that they were this kind of stitcher, like an Ada stitcher or a even weave stitcher, or that they were a higher count stitcher, etc. So I tried to pay attention to what people were telling me, um, to do this update, to try and, um, you know, do what you were looking for. So what I have, um, I have more 28 count than last time and I have lots of 32 count. So I've got a couple pieces of the gray marble. Maybe I'll turn it this way. The deep pumpkin. I've got that in Ada. You can see here, this is 16 count Ada. So I've now got it in Ada and, um, it's a little bit of Lugana right there. And I've got some Lugana here as well. 28 count for both of those. I've just got a couple pieces. I just picked up, excuse me. I just picked up um, a very small bit of Lugana to try dyeing it because I knew it would dye differently and I didn't really know what to expect or how well it would go. It's beautiful. I love it. it makes me want to stitch on Lugana like all the time now. So interestingly, when I dyed the Lugana, I expected it to be lighter. So actually every piece of the, well, the two pieces of Lugana that I did um, I actually dyed them the deep color. So like this Lugana was dyed with that amount of dye, but it looks like the soft blue, the soft sea. Same thing with this Lugana here. It's dyed the deep pumpkin, but it comes out as soft pumpkin. I kind of expected that to happen. So it didn't, it didn't surprise me at all, but it's, I really love it. So what I've got, I've got, um, lots of 32 count. I've got lots of 28 count linen. I've got a couple pieces of the 28 count Lugana and I've got 16 count Ada. Now my Ada um, is Zweigart and there's two different dimensions you can purchase that, well, that I could purchase from the distributor. I went with the smaller size and I'm, I'm not gonna do that again. So I got the 43 inch wide fabric, um, which means that the fat quarters and the fat eighths are smaller and it also kind of throws off my dye recipe because both the Lugana and the um, linen are wider, significantly wider. So I want to get wider Ada next time. So I'll still use this Weigart, but I'm going to go with the wider fabric. So this time only, I'm going to have smaller pieces of Ada than what I'll have in the future. Um, this is all um, the porcelain and the harvest moon. So I don't have any Lugana in the Porcelain or the Harvest Moon, but I have some 36 count linen in um, the Porcelain. And I have the Ada in both, in all of them, both the Deep and the Soft Porcelain. The Porcelain dyed a bit darker this time. So uh, I think I'm gonna tweak my recipe just a little bit. Um, it's kind of hard to see what's actually happening here color-wise. Of course, the lighting is tricky. And even the photos that I take are um, tricky. So please, when you're looking at them, um, the listings on my Etsy shop, I put the DMC equivalent and I always check to make sure that that still looks like the DMC equivalent. Um, so that will give you a better sense for the color than just the photos do. The photos are not as accurate as I wish they were, but I've tried tweaking them as much as possible. And even between like my phone and how it looks on my phone versus how it looks on my computer, they look different. So it's weird. Um, so again, I have several pieces of 28 count. I have several pieces of 32 count. I have a few pieces of 36 count linen, a couple pieces of 28 count Lugana, and many pieces of 16 count Ada. 
occasionally um, there was a problem with um, like a flaw in the fabric or maybe something with the dye. So sometimes I have actually half of a fat eighth, uh, like a very small thing that would be good for like a small project, like an ornament or something, a prairie school or Santa, something like that. Um, and those are very inexpensive and that will give you a chance to try the fabric if you just want to try it out and see what it's like. So occasionally I'll have something like that. And so I have a few of those. So the colors that I have are deep sea and soft sea, deep pumpkin and soft pumpkin, deep porcelain and soft porcelain, and harvest moon and gray marble. So I didn't do any of the yellow this time um, just because uh, I could only dye so much fabric and what people seemed to want more were those colors. So that's what I dyed. Um, so those will be in my Etsy shop and I'll be updating my Etsy shop Saturday at uh, 11 a.m. So you can look for it there. Um, and I'll just keep dyeing fabric. I just got some 40 count linen that arrived yesterday. So the next update will include some 40 count linen. And I'll just keep kind of adding slowly um, more fabrics and counts. And um, I've got a couple of colors in the works that I'm really excited about. And I'm starting to think about Christmas fabric dyeing. So I've got lots of cool stuff in the works that I'm excited about. So, um, my Etsy shop is linked below. It's Luminous Fiber Arts. Um, you can get updates uh, via my Facebook page, my Luminous Fiber Arts Facebook page. I'll, I'll link that below. And also on Instagram, I post updates there as well. And I'm Luminous Fiber Arts on um, Instagram. So um, I guess that's all I've got for today. And I hope that you've been having lots of stitching time and that you're having a wonderful September. And Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care.